I've always said that I don't sell anything. I simply make sure that my clients show up when the triggering event happens and their ideal customer goes on a journey to solve the problem that they have. That's what I do. It's not about selling because when you understand their problem and their pain, the sale makes itself. I first learned about the hero's journey from Joseph Campbell, the writer whose work inspired people like George Lucas of Star Wars fame. That was Daryl Evans you heard. He does for small businesses what Campbell did for Lucas, starting with the buyer's journey. This is the Business Infrastructure Podcast, the show where we offer strategies, tactics, and resources to cure back office blues and keep your business operating as good on the inside as it looks on the outside. I'm your host, Alicia Butler-Pierre, and you're about to learn more about the buyer's journey, how it can help you achieve massive scale, and so much more. This episode is brought to you by Equilibria Incorporated, the company behind this podcast where we design scale-ready business infrastructure for fast-growing small businesses. Daryl Evans is a man of many talents, including finance, sales, marketing, and technology. He's found a way to parlay those talents into different roles, including investor, business coach, and digital marketing maestro. He's not one to let dust collect on his feet and seems to have a crystal ball that he looks into to predict future market trends. Either that, or he has a knack for knowing which digital technologies to become an early adopter of. And it's paid off. He's going to share one of those times when he started a digital marketing agency and scaled a seven-figure company's revenue by five times. This is episode 211, Web 2.0, how Daryl Evans and his team scaled an auto body shop with digital marketing. My name is Daryl Evans, and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada, born and raised, which uh, some people find surprising when I travel. They're like, you're actually from Las Vegas? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what's so wrong with that? <laughs> like, well, what do you do in Vegas? I'm like, go to school, go to the movies, go to the grocery store, play football, baseball. I mean, we do all the same things here you do where you live. <laughs> Everybody thinks we live on the strip. <laughs> I went to college to pursue a degree in finance and really wanted to, at least I thought, uh, I had a number of things pulling at me in my early 20s, but um, I originally went to school for electrical engineering, actually. And two years in, I, I was running a Taco Bell restaurant. I was one of the youngest general managers of a Taco Bell franchise while I was in school. And the business bug was biting at me. And so I actually even started a, a little business side hustle, if you will, out of the trunk of my car as well. But fast forward into the switch to finance, I thought I wanted to go work on Wall Street as I learned about stocks. And in one of my financial analyst classes, portfolio theory, actually, we had to build a portfolio and we were learning about all the things with re investment return and risk management and so forth. Even though Daryl found finance to be fascinating, that urge to start his own business just wouldn't go away. Once he finished college, he found a job in financial sales. And although he did well, he felt unfulfilled. Eventually, he moved to the mortgage industry. I grew to become one of the top producing reps in the state and then ended up co-owning a mortgage company. Yep, it was official. The venom from that entrepreneurial bug finally took hold of Daryl. But another bug was about to take an even bigger bite, one whose effect would make a lasting mark, the technology bug. But my journey to where I'm at today started in 2003. 2003, I opened my first email account in terms of my email marketing, and I realized that I could take what I was speaking to my clients about on a regular basis, be it frequently asked questions, things that they needed to know that they didn't know. And I just dumped it all into an email system because I realized that my customer at that time, whether they were buying real estate or whether they were going to need a mortgage for that real estate or whether they were an investor or someone who was in the military who was transferring to the base in my city, there was a time delay in the sales conversion. Nothing was urgent. So I became an early student of making sure 
that I was top of mind when the transaction would take place and I would release the need for when it needed to close. So my sales pressure went completely out the door. So 2003, I started an email. With an email system in place to help him stay top of mind for existing and potential clients, two years later, Daryl took his lead generation process a step further. Then I start learning about, oh, you can build these little things called websites. And so now I'm thinking, oh, leverage is at play because now I don't have to. I mean, and I still met clients, of course, but fast forward to 05, we build a website, we start an internet marketing leads division. So now we're actually getting leads from the internet. 07, I start on YouTube because now I'm saying, oh, not only can I communicate through email on an automated basis, oh, now I can actually record the videos and let people watch the videos. At this point, you might be thinking that leveraging videos to communicate about his services seems so obvious. But keep in mind, it's 2007, and YouTube only started two years earlier. Daryl was clearly an early adopter of this cutting-edge technology. And if they could watch the video, that would be very similar to them hearing me in my office, and that might help build trust faster. You've got to be an expert at what you do. At some point, someone's going to buy because they trust you. With a multimedia strategy for attracting leads and converting them to clients, Daryl was well on his way to mega success. Just when he was on a roll, a year later, in 2008, the mortgage crisis hit the U.S. His company went from closing loans for an average of 4,000 homes a month down to 800. But Daryl's not one to give up easily. Then the market crashes. I went through my uh, 12, 18 months of hard times, no question. But at the end of the day, most of my business was coming in through the internet. People were looking at me in the, in, in the industry and they're like, hey, how did you recover so fast? How did you have business still coming in? Everyone else is. And I says, oh, you haven't heard of this little thing called the internet? It was this inquisitiveness of others that led Daryl to meeting the person who would become his business partner of a future business. Turns out he also worked in the mortgage industry. He was a vice president of business development at the time. And he was like, Daryl, how are you getting all this business? Because I, you know, I had systems, I had processes, which is right up your alley, Alicia. I mean, I had gone through business coaching and set up businesses, you know, set up my business back then to run with team and systems and processes and all those things that, that you want to have a, a well-oiled machine business. And here it was, 09-ish, and I'm thinking, hmm, the industry is kind of faltering. And no one seems to know that you can acquire customers online. By 2009, Daryl had the business infrastructure required to take the business to the next level. That is, he had the people, the processes, and the technology to scale sustainably and profitably. As fate would have it, he also happened to work with a business coach who helped him develop a 25-year life plan. That work combined with his assessment of the mortgage industry and the upward trends of digital marketing, gave Daryl the confidence to once again try something new, but with an untapped twist. I realized, oh, digital marketing is only going to grow and there's only going to become more adoption. I was really fortunate to really understand human psychology and really start to beat on this idea of understanding the buyer's journey. How do people buy what they buy? And it wasn't just from my experience. And then I started noticing the overlaps. I started noticing that us humans, we do the same things. No matter where we came from, no matter what we look like, no matter what neighborhood, no matter what job. But when we go to make a buying decision about anything, sometimes it's a short decision, sometimes it's a long decision, there's almost always the same buyer's journey. And it's known to a lot of marketers. But I just became fascinated by it because I'm thinking, oh, so we can go into this marketing agency sort of world and we can really impact all kinds of businesses, not just the businesses I was familiar with. And that's beca that became the roadmap for us, which was, let's start this agency. Mind you, the recession was still going on. But what others saw as crazy, he and his business partner saw as opportunity. And... We were like, let's help small businesses, especially local businesses, navigate this economic storm and transition 
the old school way of marketing, offline, face-to-face, billboard, radio, TV, et cetera. Not that they don't still work, but let's actually help them improve their ROI, help them with the strategy, help them become more digitally forward and relevant, and actually help them scale with this process. That turned out to be a smart move. By 2010, they were off. And over the past 12 years, they've helped companies across 41 industries achieve a combined revenue north of nine figures. With so much success, I asked Daryl if he could share one of their many stories from their early days in the agency. So 2012, we meet a gentleman. His name is Mike. He was in the auto body shop or auto body collision repair business. Uh, This is a place that you would go to if you end up in, for whatever unfortunate reason, you end up in a car accident and your car is disabled, needs repaired, body shop type of work. Not, Not an auto mechanic, but an auto body shop. And he happened to know or get in, he got introduced to my business partner. And so that's my business partner is who brought him in as a client. And he'd been in business 12 years. He'd had a website at the time we met him, but his complaint was very much the same. The same as what Daryl has consistently heard, even to this day, about various digital marketing tools. We've actually done some online marketing. We've run some ads. We've tried SEO. We've hired this firm, that firm. We've hired someone in-house. Heck, I even had my kid do it because they grew up with a smartphone. But, but the reality is it isn't working. He was wanting to scale the business. Now, at the time, we didn't know that he wanted to exit or if it was, it was even a consideration. What we knew was that he was one of the top shops in town. He was doing about four, four and a half million dollars This client was operating a $4 million business at the time and wanted to scale. He knew he needed a marketing strategy, but was frustrated. So Daryl and his team went to work applying their proven process. What exactly is that process? And how did it lead to this client's company scaling their revenue to $22 million? I know, I know, it was just starting to get good, right? Well, there's more where that came from. To listen to the full interview, be sure to click the link in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so that you'll know when our next episode drops. Until then, keep operating smoothly. Join us next week for another episode of Business Infrastructure with Alicia Butler-Pierre.